of there, my little Scooby gang. See what I did there? Today, I would like to talk to you about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, <laughs> which it's just always funny in and of itself, isn't it? Because she's got a stupid name and she slays vampires. Good comedy. The reason I want to talk to you about this particularly now is because it is the 20th anniversary of the show, which is both wonderful and exciting and at the very same time makes me feel really, really incredibly terribly old. Because I remember when the show came out in 1997, I was 12. That gets me right in my really decrepit, <laughs> haggard old feels. Anyway, yes, I remember seeing the ads for it and thinking that looks nuts and then watching it and confirming it was indeed nuts but it was also brilliant and unlike anything I had ever seen on TV before. Here we had this 16 year old girl who was a sort of stereotypical cheerleader type, you know, blonde, pretty, perky, bit ditzy and she goes to high school and does all the normal high school stuff but also it just happens to be not in her spare time, like not in the same way that Clark Kent isn't Superman in his spare time. He's Superman all the time. He just sometimes fights evil. Buffy is the Slayer all the time. That is a burden that she carries all of the time and does all the normal teenage stuff, but also sometimes just fights vampires. And there are so many reasons why Buffy was such an important show to me. But I think first and foremost, it was that kind of mythology behind it that drew me to it. There are so many shows about detectives who solve crimes or even superheroes like Batman who fights crime but they all choose to do what they do. Buffy like Neo or Frodo or Harry Potter was the chosen one which is sort of a trope in itself it's like the character who is chosen by some force and is now the only one who can possibly resolve the plot. Katniss Everdeen is another good example actually because even though she volunteers to save Prim initially her role as leader of the rebellion is kind of chosen for her. And in this way, these characters become sort of reluctant heroes, which can make them so much more interesting than someone like, say, Captain America, who genuinely himself believes in freedom and good and the American way, and who seems kind of happy almost to throw himself on his sword for his cause. There's a certain charm to that kind of character too, of course, but for me, the moments that always hit me hardest in Buffy were the ones where you could kind of see that reluctance. And not in a whiny, petulant teenage kind of way, but in a genuine desire to just live a life free from pain and tragedy and suffering, which in a way is very relatable. Everyone gets that sometimes, teenagers especially, who are coming of age, but even in adulthood you find yourself asking, why me? Why do I have to carry this burden? Why do I have to deal with all these responsibilities? Why has this, whatever it is, happened to me? But the lesson in this show was always that no matter how hard things got or how badly she'd been beaten down, Buffy got back up and she fought. And that was what made her brave, not her badass abilities or her super strengths, but her defiance and her resilience and her selflessness. And relationships too were so important to what made her great. Even in, um, season four, the baddie, Adam, went about removing her friends from her life as a strategy to make her weaker because he knew how big a role that they played. And she eventually had to concede that she wasn't as strong alone as she was with them. And all of this, all of these lessons are so valuable to us. I think in particular as a show that was aimed at girls and young women. I mean, what, what better lesson is there to learn that it's okay to be weak sometimes. It's okay to be sad and broken and to lean on your friends. So long as you do pick yourself up and you do fight on, that's what being brave is. In fact, something that's always stuck with me was um, in the season five finale, Buffy says to Dawn, the hardest thing in this world is to live in it. Be brave, live. Wow. I mean, yeah, okay, it took me like another decade or so to fully get that, but the notion of it was instilled in me from a young age because of that show. So many female characters are just fodder. They're just objects, really, who are unrelatable and poorly written and who are just there to move the plot forward or give the men something to do, <laughs> for want of a better word. But I think... What might be even more dangerous than that are female characters who are strong and that's all they are. They fight like a man and they act like a man and you never see their flaws or their vulnerabilities 
And so you think you're supposed to be that way, which is both untrue and completely unrealistic, obviously. I could talk for hours about what a positive role model Buffy Summers is, but I think you get the picture. We'll move on. Another one of the reasons that I love this show was that it was so progressive. Willow was, I think, the first openly gay long-standing character in a TV show that I had seen. And her coming out and her subsequent relationship with Tara was handled just so beautifully and delicately and with a kind of maturity I didn't see anywhere else. Until then, and even now actually, lesbianism and bisexuality in particular were sexualized so much in film and TV that the notion of a meaningful on-screen gay relationship was practically foreign to me. It really taught me a lot actually and as a young woman realizing I might be as Willow would put it a bit gay <laughs> um, it made that realization so much more normal and so much less scary than it might otherwise have been. And with that the sun has set <laughs> heralding the end of this video except it's not no, I say, because I must talk about Joss Whedon, the man, the legend, the genius that is Joss Whedon. And again, I could talk about progressiveness for days. It's such an interesting topic and it goes so much further in Buffy than just with the characters of Willow and Tara. But yeah, progressiveness and role models aside, it's just a bloody good show. And I really do think that that's down to Joss Whedon. I think him putting his stamp on it was paramount to the show's success. I mean, you look at something like the Avengers now and you think yep yeah, that is how you write for an ensemble cast and that is where this man's real skill lies because I cared about every single character good and bad and I mean that literally good and bad like most of them were good and bad simultaneously because most people are and the writing was always good from day one but it just got better and better and better I was never bored of a storyline I was always surprised by the twists and turns and even now, actually, when I'm writing with Paul Neefsey, who's also a fan of the show, I'm never stuck for a reference or a way of explaining myself because every single one I need was in Buffy at some point and every single one is a good example of how you do something. The direction, too, was always spot on and you look at episodes like Hush, which is almost entirely without dialogue, or Restless, which is a sort of Michelle Gondry-esque trippy dream sequence, or The Body, one of the most powerful episodes of anything I've ever seen which was done entirely without music or the exact opposite of that once more with feeling the musical episode for a director to be able to handle that array of styles and tones and genres even is really remarkable and even now when I'm out pitching my scripts I get asked quite a lot why horror sci-fi and comedy like why those three seems an odd combination and I usually struggle to answer that question, but sitting here now talking about this, I mean, probably could be the seven sort of formative years I spent just watching a master at work, excuse the pun, interweaving these genres so effortlessly. I mean, that has to be where it came from, doesn't it? Anyway, for these reasons and a hundred more I don't have time to go into right now, Buffy really has changed my life and has affected me as a writer, as a director and as a woman and I am so thankful to this day that I became a fan of the show all those years ago. For those of you who haven't seen it or for those of you who have but just can't get enough, Sci-Fi are showing the top 20 episodes as voted for by fans this weekend. So cancel your plans, stock the fridge, pop the kettle on and settle in for the best of Buffy weekend. Hope you enjoy it.